Good morning, Alexandria Covenant Church family. It is good to see you this Resurrection Sunday. For those of you joining us online, we welcome you as well. For those of you who may be in the patio, good morning and welcome this Resurrection Sunday as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. As we enter into our time of worship this morning, I want to read you some words from the Gospel of Mark. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb and they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? When they looked up, they saw the stone, which was very large and had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side. They were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. Amen? You know, we have a tradition. Amen. Let's praise the Lord for that. We have a tradition in the Christian church on Resurrection Sunday, and it goes something like this, that I'm going to say he is risen, and I want you to respond by saying he is risen indeed. He is risen. He is risen. He is risen. Amen to that. And that is why we are here today. We are here today to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Please pray with me. Father God, we humbly come today recognizing the significance of this day and how important it is to those of us in the Christian faith. That, Lord, we recognize that without the resurrection, there is no hope for us. But because of the resurrection, we have all the hope in the world. Today, as we take time to consider the hope that we have and what we gain through the resurrection, bless our worship this morning. Keep our eyes fixated on you. Help us to find this time to be a time of celebration, a time of joy because of what you have done for us as we celebrate the great gift that we have all received for those who have faith in you through the resurrection of Jesus. For it's in Christ's name we pray, amen. Please stand as we sing together. Oh, 
Father God, once again, as we lift our voices to you with thanksgiving in our heart, we rejoice in the fact that we're here today to celebrate our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. We give thanks once again. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Lost in 
his grip on me you have broken every chain there's salvation in your name jesus christ my living hope then came the morning that sealed the promise your buried body began to breathe out of the silence the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me then came the morning that sealed the promise your buried body began to breathe out of the silence the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me jesus yours is the victory Jesus is our living hope. Uh, I'd like to invite you to, be, to stand while I read the scripture this morning. Uh, so if you'd stand with me, we're going to read from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 14 through 22, and it says this, And if Christ has not been raised, then all of our preaching is useless, and your faith is useless. And we apostles would all be lying about God, for we have said that God raised Christ from the grave. But that can't be true if there is no resurrection from the dead. And if there is no resurrection from the dead, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then your faith is useless and you are still guilty of your sins. In that case, all who have died believing in Christ are lost. And if our hope in Christ is only for this life, we are to be more than pitied than anyone in the world. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead. He is the first of a great harvest of all who have died. So you see, just as death came into the world through a man, now the resurrection from the dead has begun through another man. Just as everyone dies because... Just as everyone dies because we all belong to Adam, everyone who belongs to Christ will be given new life. You may be seated.
Let's praise the Lord for that. Can we do that? Isn't it good to be together as God's people this Resurrection Sunday? Amen? Amen. You know, Christians all over the world will be gathering together this morning and all throughout the day to recognize and to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. We also gather to recognize and celebrate the hope that we have in Jesus, don't we? And today I want you to think about the hope that you have in Christ. I also want you to consider today the reality of the resurrection and what we gain because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I know that hope is something people are looking for all over the world, especially in these days where the world feels like it's chaotic and filled with despair. But people are looking for hope in places that they likely won't find it. People, places, and things that don't matter and certainly won't last. It always intrigues me as to what people place their hope in or where people go to find hope. The object of our hope is important. Why? Because the object of our hope will always determine how we live today and what we can look forward to tomorrow. Let's pray. God, as we gather together this morning, a few among many throughout the whole world, celebrating the resurrection of our Lord from the dead, a resurrection that brings hope, that brings a certain future to our lives. I pray this morning that as we enter into a time of your word, through the teaching of your word, that our eyes and our ears, that our hearts and our minds would be open to receive what you have to give us today. Encourage us, remind us of the benefits of the resurrection and the hope that it brings to our lives. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. The English word for hope, it does a really poor job of translating what hope really means throughout the Bible. If you were to read throughout the New Testament and the Old Testament alike, how you would understand hope from an English language perspective is certainly different than how God intended hope to be described throughout the entire Bible. In the New Testament, the Greek word used for hope is the word elpis. And it means assurance of the future. You know, biblical hope is an expression of an expected and an anticipated outcome. In the Bible, the word hope is used to describe that which we can look forward to with absolute confidence based on the promises of God and because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In the English language, however, we don't gain that meaning of hope, do we? Hope is often a word used to describe something more like wishful thinking. Something that, that maybe uh, we have uh, the uncertainty of a desired outcome for. Let me give you an example. In our world today, we use hope like this. I hope that COVID-19 goes away and that life gets back to normal next week. Oh, you were with me right away, weren't you? Yeah, I hope so too. I hope COVID-19 goes away. And I actually hope it goes away next week. But in English language, we're left with wishful thinking, aren't we? Because I think we're more certain that it won't be gone next week than we are that it would be. The Bible, however, talks about hope as a certainty of what we can look forward to. A certainty of an expected outcome. Something that we don't have to wonder or wish about. For example, if my grandma dies from cancer, I have hope that she will go to heaven because she is a Christian. Do you hear my hope in that? My hope is not in what I wish could happen. My hope is based on the promise of God 
the person of Jesus Christ and the resurrection itself. My grandma is no longer living, but I have the absolute confident assurance that she is with her Lord Jesus Christ today. Why? Because of the promise of God. Because of the very word of God. Because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ and the hope that he brought to her life and he brings to my life as well. Hope should bring change to our lives. And it should catapult us in a direction of, of living with purpose in life and confidence about our future. I think that for many, the understanding of hope as being something that is uncertain or wishful thinking hinders people's, people's ability to find purpose in this life. I also think it hinders people's ability to have a positive outlook on their future. And as long as people understand hope as being something that is uncertain, we don't have a whole lot to look forward to, do we? People will always succumb to a life of despair if the hope that they believe in is an uncertain or wishful thinking kind of hope. I recently read a story by a well-known pastor, Chuck Swindoll, about a lady named Mrs. Roberts. You know, Mrs. Roberts, uh, her husband had died from a sudden heart attack. She was alone, afraid, and facing an unknown future. Her grief and her despair, it knew no bounds. In the weeks that followed her husband's funeral, Mrs. Roberts would leave the house every day to visit the grave of her husband. And every day that she left her lonely home for the cemetery, her despair, it only deepened. Well, Mrs. Roberts was a fine, morally upright woman. She was one of those people that we would call a good person. She was a good person. But she had no personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Over the years, her neighbor had reached out to her and tried to share the love of Christ and the gospel with her, but she was never really all that receptive to it. After all, she was a good person. Why did she need the gospel anyway? Because she never had a relationship with Jesus Christ, she really had no hope, did she? She had no hope in his resurrection, no hope in happiness in life, certainly no hope of an eternal, peaceful home in heaven someday. Her goodness... Her moral standing, her uprightness could never attain that for her. One day, Mrs. Roberts' neighbor came to encourage her with the good news about Jesus. She baked some fresh chocolate chip cookies and grabbed a pitcher of lemonade and went over to her neighbor and sat down with Mrs. Roberts and wanted to encourage her in the season of grief and loss. That very afternoon, Mrs. Roberts listened to the good news of Christ and she embraced the truth that because Jesus rose from the dead, death has no final claim to victory in her life. And those who believe in Jesus, they will live forever. Mrs. Roberts, her life was forever changed that day. It was changed because she came to an understanding of who Jesus is and what he has done for her the importance of the resurrection and the life that it brings to her life. And now Mrs. Roberts was able to live her life, not only with hope, but she found purpose and meaning in life as well. All of this, why? Because of the resurrection. But I want you to consider with me for a moment, what if the resurrection never really happened? What if it's all a hoax? What if it never really took place? Consider that. If Jesus never raised from the dead, what hope would Mrs. Roberts have to look forward to? For those of us who are Christians, followers of Jesus, people who trusted in Jesus for our salvation, what hope would we have to look forward to? For Mrs. Roberts, the resurrection didn't ever happen 
then she has nothing but a life of continued deepening despair to look forward to. For the rest of us, well, we have nothing more than a life of hopelessness to look forward to. And that's no life at all. Let's be honest. If Jesus didn't raise from the dead and come out of that empty tomb alive, then nothing really matters, does it? If the resurrection of Jesus was a hoax, then nothing, absolutely nothing has any meaning at all. It really doesn't. We would just be people passing in the wind with no purpose or meaning in this life. Without the resurrection of Jesus, our lives as Christians become meaningless. The life that we live and the work that we do will soon be forgotten. Without the resurrection, if it's not true, then our impact on others would essentially have little or no value whatsoever. The blessings we receive and give to others would be insignificant and pointless. Furthermore, we would waste our time talking to and praying and trusting in some strange person named Jesus, who if he never raised from the dead, would be a dead savior which is no savior at all. In the New Testament, there's a book called 1 Corinthians. It's a letter, actually, that was written by the Apostle Paul to a church in Corinth. And he addresses this very issue. In fact, Paul makes a masterful defense of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and he talks about the importance that it has for the Christian faith. What he does is he points people to the gospel and he says, listen, Jesus lived, he died, he rose again on the third day, just as the scripture said. He then goes into this defense of the resurrection and the importance and the meaning that it brings to our lives. He also clearly pointed out how useless our faith would be if the resurrection of Jesus Christ never really happened. And in chapter 15, Verses 14 to 19, this is how Paul articulated the uselessness of our faith if the resurrection was not real. This is what he says. If Christ has not been raised, then all of our preaching is useless. Your faith is useless, and we apostles would all be lying about God. For we have said that God has raised Christ from the grave. But that can't be true if there's no resurrection of the dead. And if there's no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then your faith is useless and you are still guilty of your sins. Well, in that case, all who died believing in Christ are lost. And if our hope in Christ is only for this life, we are to be pitied more than anyone in the world. Wow. This is what Paul says. How pointless the Christian life would be if Christ is still dead. Paul says that if there's no resurrection, then Christ is dead and your faith is useless. The disastrous consequences for the Christian, if the resurrection is not true, are many. Of which Paul just names a few. Let me remind you what he said. The resurrection's not true, then Jesus is not alive. Proclaiming the gospel would be meaningless. Our faith in Christ would be worthless. All witnesses to and preachers of the resurrection and the gospel, well, they would be liars. All people would be still guilty of their sins. All believers throughout history past would have been eternally lost. And Christians above all else would be the most pitied people on earth. Why? Why? Because if the resurrection of Jesus didn't actually happen, then our lives as Christians is based on a lie, not on the truth. But the resurrection of Jesus Christ did happen. There's all kinds of records, historical and biblical records of the reality of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So where do we find hope in this? Let me tell you. In verse 20. This is what Paul says. It's great. He says, but in fact, he doesn't say, I wish. 
He doesn't say, wouldn't it be great if? He doesn't say, can you imagine? No, what he says is, but in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead. And the implications of this are huge. This is huge. Because Jesus is alive, we can live with hope. We can live with purpose. We can live with meaning. And we can live with a certain future in store for us as Christians. We have every reason to live for God. We have every reason to to worship God, to pray to God, to walk with God, to talk with God, to receive every blessing that God has in store for us so that we can share those blessings with others. The resurrection of Jesus changes everything. When you follow Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life, God will change you from the inside out and that should affect every part of your life. Your attitude, your thoughts, your words, your actions, your relationship with your spouse, your relationship with your family, with your friends, with your coworkers, the integrity of your life. Your moral compass changes. Why? Because now God's standard for your life becomes the compass upon which you now are living your life for. The benefits of the resurrection of Jesus from the dead are many. But today I want to mention two specifically. Two benefits. Because of the resurrection of Jesus, all believers have hope that gives us purpose in life, And we can also live with a confidence about our future. Number one, the hope that we gain through the resurrection brings purpose to our lives. If you don't have hope, you won't find purpose. If you don't have hope, you won't have meaning in life. At the end of your life, you realize it was all a waste of time. But we gain through the resurrection a purpose for living. The average lifespan is 25,550 days, 70 years. Do the math. Think about this. If you were older than 70 years old, you are living in the bonus years of your life. God is good, isn't he? He's given you many extra years, many more than many others. As Christians, it's important that we understand that we're not just saved from something, but we're also saved for something. We are called to be image bearers of God in this world, and we're called to share the hope that we have with others. In Matthew 5, verses 14 to 16, it says, You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket but on a stand and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. You know, it is important that we make every day count for Jesus. After all, the investment that we make in the lives of others, people, they come with heavenly rewards. But let me remind you and let me encourage you. Our heavenly reward should never be the motivation for our love for God and our love for others. So what should motivate us? What should motivate us to love God? What should motivate us to love others? Let me tell you. It's God's love for us. You see, God loved us first. And because God loves us, that should motivate us to love him and to love others. John 3, 16, you know it. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, will not die, but will have everlasting life. We love God because he first loved us. The second thing is that because of Jesus' resurrection and our faith in him, we can look forward to our resurrection and eternal life with Jesus in heaven someday. Purpose in this life? 
confidence about the future life ahead. Our hope because of the resurrection gives us a new outlook on our future. It helps us to live with an eternal perspective in mind. What difference does that make? Well, if all we have to live for is what this world has to offer, that's not a lot, is it? But if we understand what God has in store for us, it shifts the way we think about our life here on earth. And when we enter into life based on what God wants for us, we see life from an eternal perspective. It changes the way we live. When interviewed about his cancer journey and how hope and the resurrection matter to his experience, Timothy Keller, a pastor and author of several Christian books, he wrote, My experience with cancer has required that I increase my hope by reading the Word of God, especially on the resurrection of Jesus. Because if he were raised from the dead, then basically it's going to be okay. And if he were raised from the dead, then Christianity is basically right. And the hope it gives is an infallible hope. A hope that will not fail us. So when it comes to the resurrection, if I am sure of it, then I am okay. I can handle anything that life or death throws at me. That's a great perspective to live with, isn't it? The Apostle Paul similarly expresses his hope in Jesus and because of the resurrection when in the book of Philippians, in chapter 1, verse 21, he writes these words. He says, for to me, living means living for Christ. And dying, well, that's even better. <laughs> How can he live like that? He can live like that because of who Jesus is and what he has done for him. And the hope, the confident assurance that he has in his faith and relationship with Jesus. That's what hope does. It helps us to live with a confident assurance of the life that we live based on the promise of God and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In John chapter 11, verses 25 and 6, Jesus said this. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live even after dying. Let me remind you all, there's a certainty to our life on earth. You're going to die. I promise, unless the Lord returns and we're taken home. But we all are subject to a physical death. Then Jesus said, everyone who lives in me and believes in me will never die. Spiritually, we will live forever. So whatever you find to be your current situation or circumstance in life, if you are a Christian, if you are a follower of Jesus, if you've responded to the gospel and said, yes, I will live for you, Jesus, then I promise you, you can live with the confidence that better days are ahead. Hope is more than an abstract idea based on our beliefs. Did you know that? Hope is something that God wants us to experience in this life. Hope becomes real to us. When what we believe in our head is experienced in our heart through intimacy with God. The theologian Jonathan Edwards, he used to say, it's one thing to believe that honey is sweet. It's another thing to taste it. He would say that the tasting of honey brings you a sweetness to your mind or to your mouth that your mind could never have. How true is that? For those of you that don't follow Jesus, you can't know the sweetness of the hope that we as Christians have until you know Jesus himself. Remember Mrs. Roberts? how she was touched by the grace of God and how she responded to the gospel, how her life of despair was turned to a life of hope and she was forever changed. Remember her story? Well, I believe that she was able to taste and see that the Lord is good. Because of the life change that she experienced, she actually found new purpose and meaning in life. 
The widow's trips to the cemetery, they never stopped. Instead, her reason for going changed. In her many graveside visits, she noticed other people weeping over and talking to cold stones, trying in vain to cling to the relationships that they once enjoyed. You know what? She understood their despair. Why? Because it wasn't all that long ago that she herself was there. But now she held a truth that they desperately needed to hear and believe. With her little New Testament in hand and some well-chosen words, this transformed woman, she comforted mourners as they wept and she offered them the very message that gave her life meaning and hope. Jesus Christ raised from the dead. That gave her life hope and meaning and purpose. Strange as it may sound, she became a cemetery evangelist. Can you imagine? How would you like that calling in life? But in place of despair, she now had hope. And she had enough hope to share with others the rest of her life. And that's our hope too, isn't it? Jesus' resurrection promises that we too will be resurrected one day, never to die again. If you're a follower of Jesus and you recognize this day, Resurrection Sunday, as a day of hope, as a day to celebrate the hope we have in Christ and the life we gain through knowing him. And you live with confidence and assurance and, and this is a high holy day for you and, and you're having a mountaintop experience in life and, and you're good with God and all is well. Then praise the Lord. If you are a Christian and you've hit some bumpy roads and you find yourself in the valley below, your world's being rocked Despair defines your life more than hope. Then you needed to be reminded today, not of the hope you could have, but of the hope you do have. Let me remind you, if you want to live a hope-filled life, then live into the life that God has for you. Sometimes we got to change the way we think so that God can renew our minds, so that our heart can change, and we can live into who God made us to be. Be encouraged today. God will meet you. He's walking with you. Remember, God never moves from us. We move from him. But if you're here today, and you don't have the hope I'm talking about, then I want to encourage you to consider the hope that Jesus has for you. It's a hope that will bring change and transformation to your life. No doubt about it. It's a hope based on the promises of God in the word of God, for it's true. It's a hope based on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. His offer to you is a life of peace in the midst of uncertainty. A life of comfort through hardships, a life where you can find purpose, where you can find meaning, a life of joy and contentment regardless of situation or circumstance, is offered to you as companion, companionship and loneliness, and hope in the midst of despair. God wants to give you a new life through his son, Jesus Christ. He wants to forgive you of your sins and he wants to give you purpose and meaning in this life and he wants to give you a confidence about your future home in heaven someday. But unless you acknowledge Jesus for who he is and respond to the gospel, that Jesus came to live the life that you couldn't live, he died the death you deserve to die. And in his resurrection, you can gain a righteousness you could never gain on your own. If you don't trust Jesus for that, then your life will be lived out in despair and hopelessness. 
Romans 10.9 says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. <laughs> That's such good news, isn't it? That is such good news. Today, maybe you're just on a journey in life. You've been able to do everything and accomplish everything you've looked to do, but you're still looking for that thing that's missing in your life. I can assure you, hope, the hope that you can find in Christ is what you need. I want you to close your eyes and bow your heads for just a moment. God, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, as you promised to be the savior, the redeemer of this lost world. That in Jesus, we can find hope and forgiveness, and salvation, purpose, and meaning in a future. As we keep our eyes closed and our heads bowed, if you're here today and you want that hope that I'm talking about, nobody's looking at you. Raise your hand. If you desire to live your life for Jesus Christ, want to live the life that he has for you, a life of purpose and meaning, a life where you have a certain future, you can have that. Salvation is never dependent on a prayer, but I offer this prayer to you as you seek God this morning. Lord Jesus, I recognize that I'm a sinner. That I have a life with no hope, but desire the hope that you have to give. I recognize the only way to gain this hope is by trusting in you, Jesus, and following you with my life. Today, I say, yes, Jesus. Forgive me of my sin. I want to trust you for my salvation. I give you thanks, God, for what the resurrection means and what it brings to our lives. In Christ's name. Amen. For those of you at home, I want you to know that if you said yes to Jesus this morning, we're going to celebrate that with you. And even for those of you here this morning, I want you to know that uh, one of the ways we want to connect with you and help you in your journey and responding to Jesus is you can take out your cell phones right now if you said yes to Jesus and you can text the key word, Hope 21 to 77222. That will let us know that you made a decision today to follow Jesus. And I can assure you, we will be in contact with you to help you on this journey of what it means to live a hope-filled life. Today is Resurrection Sunday. He is risen. <laughs> Amen. Let's stand as we close in this song together.
Christ exists in us because the resurrection is real and true. Amen? Amen. Amen. As you go from this place today, I just want to remind you that God loves you. And one of the ways he demonstrated his love for you is through his son, Jesus Christ. And one of the ways that Jesus demonstrated his love for you is by giving up his life so that you and I could have life in him. All of this based on the promises of God and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. For those of you here and those of you at home, I do want to remind you, if you made a decision to follow Jesus today, text that keyword HOPE21 to 77222. We want to follow up with you. Be mindful that as you go through this day, you are to be people who are image bearers of God in the world, representatives of all who Christ is. And we are called to share the hope that we have with those who don't know Jesus. Go in the love and grace, mercy and peace of God today. And as you go from this place, celebrate the goodness of God and the resurrection today. Amen? Amen. As you make your way out today, we are taking up an offering. We ask you to give generously to the ministry of the church. After all, each time you give to God's work here, it goes to help develop people in the faith of the Lord Jesus and also bring someone closer to God every day. Have a great day. We'll see you next week.